Hi guys, welcome back to the Arter server. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to install the rear flex bay option for the R720 XD server. So this is the R720 XD. If you've been following my channel, this is the one I had to fix up a couple weeks ago. And this is one of my favorite form factors. I love the uh, 12 three and a half inch drive bays in a 2U form factor. And there are other uh, servers just like this, like the uh, Supermicro A26 as well as the previous generation uh, R510 and the newer generation R730 XD. So this I think is just a great storage server form factor. It's relatively small. It's got a lot of drive bays. And one of the favorite features, uh, one of my favorite features of this R720 XD is this thing back here. So these are two, two and a half inch drive bays. And this is exclusive to the R720 XD, not the regular R720. So if you're watching this video and you're thinking, hey, this sounds really cool, you're going to want to get yourself an R720 XD. All right, so what is this? This is called the rear flex bay option for the R720 XD. That's what at least what Dell calls it. And it gives you two, two and a half inch drives in the rear. And this is great for uh, putting together a mirror uh, boot drive or if you are booting off some other device, you could have a mirrored pair for a cache drive. So there's a lot of things you can do with this that I think is really neat in addition to having the 12 three and a half inch drive base up front. Now the R720 XD does come in two variants. This is the one that I think is great for mass storage because it's got the three and a half inch drive base. And of course you wanna be using those large hard drives for um, you know, large storage servers. But there is another version of the R720 XD, and that is one that has 24 two and a half inch drives up front. Of course, that's probably better for a uh, more IO intensive application, but you might not have as much storage if you're using two and a half inch drives. So that's not great for storage, but great for higher performance. This is great for large capacity storage. And both of the uh, both versions of the R720 XD uh, offer this rear flex bay option. Now, if you're looking closely at this rear flex bay option, you'll notice, yeah, the two and a half inch drive bays are there, but there's nothing connecting it all together. And that's because you got to install an optional kit that uh, adds a backplane here for these two drives to plug into. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to install that kit and also kind of what parts you need. All right, so for the rear flex bay, this is the kit right here. And there are some differences between the kit for the R720 XT that has the 12 three and a half inch drive bays versus the 24 two and a half inch drive bays. So I'm gonna elaborate on that a little bit more, but first of all, the thing that is common with uh, both uh, variants of the R720 XT is this back plane. So this is a dual SAS connector back plane. So yes, you can use SAS or SATA drives back here. I personally prefer using enterprise grade SSDs and uh, Intel makes a lot of great uh, enterprise grade uh, SATA SSDs. And then there's all sorts of varieties of SAS enterprise SSDs as well. So this is the backplane that goes back in here and you'll see there's a SAS connector right there, an SSF, uh, SFF 8087 connector. So this is common for both variants of the R720 XD. In addition to that, this kit has four different cables. So let me kind of explain what these cables are because this is the uh, important part because there are some differences. All right, so first of all, there are these two short cables and these are gonna be identical uh, for both variants of the R720 XD. So one of these is a power cable. This is gonna plug into the motherboard and provide power to that backplane. The other one is a signal cable that's going to allow this backplane to be communicating with the onboard BMC so that it can detect when a drive has failed or any other stuff like that. All right, so these two cables are going to be identical across both R720 XDs, and you're going to need this to install that backplane. Now, to connect that backplane to the front backplane, and that's how the data I.O. works in this case, uh, this, whatever drives you plug into the rear back, this rear flex bay option is going to be controlled by the same controller that's controlling your front primary backplane. And that's because it's going to be connected together via a SAS cable like this. All right, now this cable and, and this other cable I'll talk about in a moment, 
these two cables are unique to this specific model. All right, so I have the 12 three and a half inch drive bay version of the R720 XT, and you need some very specific uh, part numbers for this cable and this other cable. And the reason is because the back plane is gonna be different and the location of the connectors that you're gonna be connecting to and the orientation and all that stuff is just gonna be a little bit different. So you're gonna need different cables. Now, if you're concerned about the details of all that, I'm gonna leave all the detailed part numbers for both versions of this kit down in the video description below. So go check that out if you wanna know exactly what the part numbers are that you need to get. All right, so this is the SAS cable that's gonna connect the rear backplane to the front backplane. And whatever is controlling your front backplane, which is usually the, whatever card you have in a mini monolithic slot over here is going to also control this rear back plane. All right, so that's the SAS cable. And then there is a signal cable that connects the front back plane to the rear back plane. And again, because the back planes can be different depending on which model of the R720 XT you, you have, this cable is also gonna be slightly different, okay? But the kit I have here specifically is for this 12, three and a half inch drive bay version. And so this is the right part, but I do have the part numbers for the 24 by 20, uh, two and a half inch drive backplane version as well. And again, I'm gonna leave all that information down in the video description. So if you need that information, go check that out, okay? All right, so we basically have four cables for the four cables in the backplane to get this kit installed. So let's go ahead and uh, show you how that's done. All right, so the first thing we gotta do is get rid of the air shroud and the fan wall in order to make room to run those cables. So this is just removing that. And then we gotta get the fan wall out. All right, so I gotta plug in a couple of cables to the back plane down over here. So I'm gonna change the angle of the camera so you guys can see that. All right, so the first two cables we're gonna install to connect to the primary back plane are these two cables right here. It's the SAS cable that connects to the uh, rear back plane and also the back plane to back plane uh, signal cable. Now, the back plane and back plane signal cable is a little bit more complicated to do, so I'm gonna do that first. Let me put that down for a second. All these cables, by the way, are labeled. If you look over here closely, it says BP, right? So that's the back plane. This side also says BP because this is back plane to back plane, so, um, but anyway, like for example, if you look at here, it says BP, here, let's see if you can, yep, BP SAS A1, right? So that's the backplane SAS A1, that's that connector over here. And if you look at the other side, it says rear backplane SAS A1, right? So that's the rear backplane. So you'll know which connector that goes where based on what's printed on the cable. All right, so this signal cable is going to go uh, into that tiny little connector down there. Hopefully you guys can see that. I'm gonna zoom in for you here. All right? So it needs to go, needs to go in there. And uh, I'm gonna use my, uh, you guys have seen this before from my other videos. It's my channel lock um, pliers. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this to kind of hold this connector and that way hopefully maybe you can get kind of see what I'm trying to do here but let's see can you guys see that okay all right so it's a little tight down here all right so hopefully you guys see that and I just have to press that in All right, so the connector has, I'll show you on this side. Uh, let's see here. All right, so the connector has these little um, latches on the side. So you wanna make sure you press it all the way in until those latches engage. All right, so yeah, I think that's all the way in there. All right, so I'm gonna run this through the cable channel, just kind of loosely for now. All right. All right, so in case you didn't see that, I'm, I'm running this uh, signal cable 
through the cable channel here on the sidewall here. All right, so the next cable is the SAS cable. Yeah, okay, so this has to make a 180 um, U-turn for whatever reason, this is just the way it's set up. But so this one that says backplane SAS A1 is gonna go right in here. All right, and it comes out this way, but it has to make a 180, uh, kind of going back the other way. And make sure that it gets inside this plastic channel over here. And the reason for that is you see these pins here, that's what the fan wall is going to uh, lock into. And so it's gonna come, it's gonna come down uh, on this area. So you wanna make sure these cables are inside the plastic so they're protected and they don't get pinched by the fan wall when you install that back. Okay, so I'm just going ahead and run the rest of the cable okay, into this channel here. All right, so let's go ahead and switch over and take a look at the uh, rear back plane and how that's gonna get installed. All right, guys, so we've got two more uh, or three more things to do here. We got the uh, rear back plane and two more cables. All right, so I'm gonna install the back plane first. So let me just put these cables aside for a second. And let me just kind of keep that out of the way a little bit. And so this basically is completely toolless. Uh, there's this kind of retention pin that keeps that back plane in place and make sure it doesn't come loose. So there are, um, let's see here, hopefully you can see this, but there are um, I don't know how you, th these grooves right here uh, in the sheet metal, right there, right there, and I think over here as well, that's going to lock into this uh, board uh, right there, right there, and right there. So you want to slide, slide the board into those grooves first, and then uh, raise this pin, and then when you let it down, it's going to lock into that hole, and that will keep the back plane in place. So that's basically it. it's really easy uh, probably more complicated to explain it than actually do it so anyway and you can kind of tug at it and make sure it's not coming loose all right so first thing let's install the sas cable that goes to the uh to that rear back plane and so now that the whatever's controlling this mini monolithic controller that's controlling the front back plane is also going to be controlling the rear back plane and then finally the signal cable uh, has a connector uh, over here, and we're going to plug that in. All right. So, oh, actually, that's not finally. <laughs> There's two more cables. All right. So we got to get power to this back plane, and that is this cable here. And again, these cables are labeled very conveniently for you. So that says BP over there, and this says MB. So that's motherboard side. All right. So the BP side is going to go right over here. And on the motherboard right there is a power connector. All right, so that goes like that. And then there is this uh, signal cable. All right, and this is also conveniently labeled MB for motherboard. So that's going to go on the motherboard and BP for backplane. So the backplane side, now these are keyed. All right, so there's a key and a, or there's a key on this side and a latch on that side. So the keys on uh, the far side from here, and then there's little holes here where the latch goes in. So let's plug that in. And then similarly, uh, there's a similar connector down on the motherboard right over here. And if you have a motherboard that's never had a rear flex bay installed, there's usually a cap on this. So you might see something a little bit different protruding out of the motherboard, just remove that cap. All right, so let's go ahead and All right, so now we are finally done. Okay, so now that we have the rear uh, flex bay option fully installed, all you have to do is put everything back and you can, let's see, back here, I actually already have uh, drive trays in here, but now you can install 
some two and a half inch drives into these drive trays and then plug it back in here. Let's see if I can do this. All right. And then your, your, your uh, drives will, uh, will plug into that uh, SAS connector back there and then it will show up as a drive in your mini monolithic controller. All right, guys, that's it for today's video. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you're into this sort of stuff, consider subscribing to the channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss my next video. Also, if you want to support this channel, go check out my eBay store. I have the greatest selection of pre-flashed IT mode HBA SAS controllers for your true NAS, ZFS, or Unraid builds. So go check out the link down in the video description. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.